And I'd like uh, now to uh, welcome to the platform Mr. J.B. Ray Smith, Executive Director of Swara Pacific, uh, to give uh, a welcome address, please. Um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, that's probably uh, the theme uh, I'm going to talk about is probably going to be reflected on many of your other speeches, and certainly Sabrina. I wish I'd had her speech first, because it's probably duplication. Um, but uh, reflecting on today's theme of a conference, um, uh, you know, with the exception of those of you in the marine services industry, um, who provide services to the marine industry, I think the term marine and money probably sounds to all of us like the sound of money flowing down the sink pretty rapidly. Um, so uh, my background with the SWAG group uh, gives me a chance to look at the global economy and, and a number of different perspectives of it. The group, our group has extensive interests in many business areas, not least shipping, where we operate in the oil service sector, the bulk sector, and a number of smaller Pacific container trays. And, and I wish there was some good news for you today, but sadly I think it's extremely limited for all of us here today. Um, even those with lots of you with cash sitting on the high sidelines waiting to invest. Um, uh, you know, the questions of negative interest rates, uh, post-bankruptcy repriced assets are definitely investment headaches for all of us. Um, looking around, uh, the dramatic drop in raw material prices has created unforeseen traumas in the BRICS and vast swathes of the world, where conventional wisdom seems to have been turned on its head with cheaper oil, iron, coal, creating significantly greater economic disruption and social disruption rather than the benefits that I think we would have expected that lower raw material prices would bring. Of course, there's some good news on the horizon. Um, you know, seemingly better economic settlements from the US, which with a stronger dollar should uh, generate, hopefully, increased imports uh, to the US. And, and as again, that 2010 mantra of global deconnectivity is being proved wrong. Um, I also think that the demise of the global economic boom is, that created so many angry people left behind, uh, you know, looking at the extremism we're seeing all over the world, uh, will start to reverse some of the unequal factors and begin to rebalance the equation. However, the effects of the improving global economy and a more equal world are unlikely to be felt by many of us here in the short term. So, uh, in thinking about what to say, uh, uh, I thought, what would, I'm, what would I like to hear from someone today? Uh, and if I was sitting in the audience, I'd probably like to hear what's happening in China. I'd like to happen what is happening in the oil price, uh, when will the markets get better, uh, when should we start investing, reinvesting, and, and lastly, what should go wrong. Um, uh, sadly, you know, I, I, if I was great at looking at the crystal ball, I'd be a lot richer and I wouldn't need to be here, I'd be on the beach, but um, I don't have any answers to these questions, but I, do, uh, I can give you some try and give you some of my thoughts as to what I see happening in the world and, and how this will affect our industry. Um, first, um, we're sitting on China's doorstep, so I might as well start there. Um, you know, I think talk of China's demise is definitely premature. Um, they have the world's second largest population. They're combined with an extremely intelligent and diligent workforce, but they are readjusting. The expectations that, however, the expectations that runaway growth has created are not easy to dispel. And even though the economy, I think, will achieve a soft landing, for those of you used to driving at 100 miles an hour, you know, when you start driving at 50 miles an hour, it feels slow, even though 50 miles an hour is a pretty respectable speed. Um, having said this, um, China rebalancing is rebalancing away from sort of things that help neighboring economies, um, not least its consumption of raw materials in favor of, of service, a more service-driven economy, which is largely going to favor the tourist-oriented and agri-economies, rather than the, the resource-rich dominated ones like Australia and Indonesia, which definitely has an impact on the type of ships we want to build. Um, so rather favoring maybe cruise ships as opposed to bulk carriers. Um, sadly, I, I doubt the shift away from heavy manufacturing will extend all the way down to the shipbuilding industry. And the fact that it's traditionally such a large employer, uh, wherever it's based, uh, it's likely to mean that North Asian yards will continue to pour additional misery into our market in the form of better, cheaper uh, ships. Uh, recently, we've all seen a stabilization in the oil price. Uh, but I'm not of the view that 
it probably could go much higher uh, while the threat of the extra supply from the US fracking industry uh, is alive and well. Um, but on the other hand, I don't really think, you know, oil price going up a lot or down, a, you know, to, within a, a range is really going to make too much difference to anyone at the moment. Um, so what I suppose I'd say, I'd summarize a picture that said the world is slowly going to stabilize, consumption will uh, start to increase again, and cargo flows will react accordingly. But the, frankly, the, he the headache of oversupply is not going away in a hurry. And indeed, those of us sitting on expensive assets, i.e. ones that we've priced and have purchased in the last 15 years, uh, you'll need to find some way of competing against newer, cheaper, more efficient assets and of taking a haircut on the value of your fleets to rebalance the equation. And that's whether you're a bank or a shipping company. Uh, um, so this leads to the next question, is, is when's the recovery? When is the recovery and what does this mean? Um, I think um, unless there are a plethora of fairy godmothers out here, I think an alarming number of owners um, will find the cost to cover the debts on their fleets will be overwhelming. Um, and that for the opportunity for cost savings is now almost exhausted uh, after all the hard work of the last years, leaving insufficient cash flow uh, to service the debt. And, and hence will be uh, called in and, and assets forwarded. And, and, and I, I saw many of you have seen the film Big Short. Um, I'm speaking to someone here earlier today. I, I think we are in the process of facing a marine equivalent of the Big Short. Um, I, I kind of think in the Big Short, but who are the, the, the drinkers, you know, having a great time before, and who are there around here, and, and now um, who are the people suffering the misery? Well, we certainly, I'm sure many of us here are part of the misery group. Um, so this is not only going to mean that uh, uh, there are a lot of very attractive prices on new buildings from government subsidized assets, subsidized new builds, but legacy assets are going to be repriced at cents on the dollar. I mean, I've heard today that there's people buying debt at 20 cents on the dollar. So if you're buying 20 cents, what does that mean for the asset value? Um, and so that's going to make life really tough for you want, people who want to make ends meet um, with economics based on historical asset prices. Now, of course, in this type of asset environment, owners will be desperate to cover costs, and I'm sure will fix longer and lower in attempt to seek some form of shelter from the misery, further exacerbating and extending the precarious situation, even as the global economy picks up. Um, so, in short, I think this means older assets still have a long way to fall, and for those of you thinking of buying new buildings from stable and quality tooth yards, you know, I think end of 2017 is a time to start looking around. Um, but in the meantime, for us who've got businesses to run, um, I don't think, I think we should be hoping for a, a replay of last century's roaring 20s, because um, I don't think too much is going to happen until then. Um, however, in the, I, I, in, the, in the picture that I've painted of severe asset depletion, the burnout of the banks, you know, the banks are going to start feeling dramatic losses, uh, and, and, you know, with the, the bulk sector and the offshore sector, uh, and, and the impact combined with the impact of Basel III on liquidity is going to mean that finance is extremely difficult for traditional ship owners to come by. Um, uh, suggesting that even if you are thinking about jumping back in, unless you've got something that most ship owners don't have, you're going to have to be very imaginative about how to raise the financing. Um, having said this, um, the marine community, and, and, and I said, you know, I'd like to know what I think could go wrong. Um, Having said this, the marine community is a global community, and we shouldn't forget that you know, sneezes in certain places provide the potential for huge headaches for us. Um, so, in closing, I want to leave you with a few thoughts of what could go wrong in the next 12 months, or the next 24 months, uh, and maybe you can reflect a little bit about what that means. Um, you know, so, what, what, you know, probably some of you might not disagree, but maybe Donald Trump as president of the US. Um, you know, an unpredictable and isolationist America. You know, what does that mean? Um, uh, uh, trouble in the Middle East uh, and, and Russia. You know, suddenly pushing oil back up to over hundred dollars a barrel. You know, immediate global recession. Um, sovereign wealth funds. You know, increase the pace of pulling money out of the money markets to keep their populations happy. Um, Brexit. The chaos that's sort of going to create in Europe. Uh, or 
um, you know, the EU collapsing on an anti-immigration backlash, um, you know, creating even more European naval gazing and definitely a European recession. Uh, and last but not least, you know, a, a successful cyber attack on the banking industry, freezing funding. And, and it doesn't take an idiot to guess what's going to happen to trade payments if that happens. I mention these things not because I think they're going to happen, but I just think there's an awful lot of things out there that could go wrong, and that if we're not thinking in the back of mind of our investment plans and all that, that these are things that, that could happen, uh, then we're going to be back where we were in 2000, saying, hey, let's spend all our money and nothing can go wrong, and, and still be in the same place in 2025. Um, so, but I don't believe in sort of finishing uh, on a completely depressing note, so let's sort of finish it. You know, for those of you who can't even yet see the light switch at the end of the tunnel to turn the light on, um, uh, I think that good times will return. Shipping has been a cyclical industry. I've been in shipping for 30 years. I think I've probably been through, uh, you know, I've been to two offshore cycles, I've been to two or other cycles. Uh, and the hard economic reality of no cash, you know, shutting down supply, gradually into using uh, you know, world trade will mean supply and will ex but the demand will exceed supply and then we'll get back to good times. Of course, then we'll be in another cycle and our children will start doing as many mistakes as we need. Thank you. If I can ask the next panel to come up.